Hey everybody, it's Andy here. Today we'll be doing an unboxing and assembly video for the G-Control Panel Computer. Please make sure to check out the resources pages for the G-Control Panel Computer on our website because things inside the box, the box itself might have changed. We'll have the most up-to-date versions of the G-Control Panel Computer available on our website. Anyways, let's get started. So we'll start by opening up the box. Inside you'll find two different boxes. One will be for the panel computer itself, as well as in this box, the mounting hardware. We'll start off by opening up the box for the mounting hardware. And inside you'll find the mounting bracket. This is a bracket for the VESA mount. If you have your own mounts, you can also use that as well. Some hardware and screws. Some more uh, tools, hardware as well. Uh, wire management clips. More hardware. This will be used for mounting it to the machine itself. This is a bracket that can be used for mounting it onto a table. So if you don't want to mount it directly to your machine, you're able to mount this on a, on a workbench or something like that. Here we have the, uh, the arm itself, which will be allowed, uh, you can use this as a swivel. And then inside here, you'll have a uh, Inside here, you'll have the uh, actual um, arm itself, which will be held vertically. And then there's one more clip for the wire management. Now we'll open up the panel computer. Inside, you'll find the cable and antenna for the Wi-Fi. And the computer itself. Last corner piece. And here's the computer. We'll take a look at the panel computer. So this is the panel computer itself. As you can see here, there's a heat sink on the back. So, and there's no fans, which means that if you're using it in a dusty environment, which is where most CNC machines tend to be, um, you won't get dust in fans, which is typically the reason why most computers die in a production setting. We also have a set of, um, I.O. We have a power switch, power cable, um, headphone jack, microphone, ethernet, four USB ports, VGA output, and an HDMI. And also you'll be able to connect stuff through Bluetooth as well. That's everything that should be in your kit. Um, as I said before, please check your uh, instructions on the website if there are any changes. Before we get started, you'll have some tools in your kit already, but you'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver as well as a four millimeter or M5 Allen key. Um, I'm assuming most people have these already in their shop. Uh, so make sure you have these before you get started. So the first step we're gonna do is mount this plate to the back of the computer. The way that this plate works is that once you have your computer set up, you'll be able to slide it onto the mount and this nut will be able to keep it in place. Our first step will be to mount this to the back and make sure that you're putting it on, on the right direction because uh, you won't be able to slide it the other way. So right now you, you can see the bottom of the computer and I'll flip it over. And you want this plate to be facing this way. Just so you know, we're using these screws. Uh, depending on what version of the kit you get, the screws might look a little bit different, but you should be able to figure out which screw to use to mount this to the back. So yeah, we'll start by, by putting in the screws here. There you go. So one thing that's important is you need to make sure that this plate is flush against the back of this. Otherwise, you'll have wobble in your system. Cool. If you're planning to mount it to a, a workbench, you'll follow these steps. The first thing we're going to do is put these parts together. They should go in together like this. And we'll grab the screws out of the kit here to uh, put this together. Or actually, it's in here. So. We'll put the two screws, we'll put a screw in like this. Oh, it's kind of tight. 
there should all you should also be able to use this uh, Allen key here. Okay, so we'll be putting these parts two together, and then we'll put the screws in from this side, like this, and line everything up. And then we'll use the Allen key to tighten everything together. There you go. So now we have this attached to each other and should be solid. And the next part we're gonna tackle is going to be the uh, mount itself. These will slide in together like this. And we're, we can adjust this later, but for the time being, we're just gonna put it on so that uh, when we put it on the machine, we'll, we'll have it every, everything ready just to throw on. So this will slide on up and down, and then by tightening this, it'll lock it into place. There you go. And just so you guys know, there's also some extra screws so you can pivot this. You can set this up to a, a tension that you'd like, or if you want to keep it at an exact position, then just tighten these up as once we have the, once you have the computer mounted to the machine. So this is basically the whole assembly. And then these parts can clip on to the, the uh, arm to help with some extra wire management. There you go. So yeah, this is the whole completed kit. Doo -doo. If we have it assembled this way, you'll be able to mount it to the um, to any sort of table um, just by sliding this on and then tightening the knob here until it's secure. There you go. Ta-da! So if you're planning to mount your mounter mount to the long mill or the alt mill, you'll follow these steps. So we'll be going over the process of mounting this bracket to the long mill. Um, so yeah, we'll get started here. If you have a dust shield attached, you'll have to remove the screws holding this in place. If you don't have a dust shield, you won't have to uh, take the screws out. So the way that this mounts on, there's four tap holes at the front foot of the long mill. And so you just basically so you have the bracket here, and so you're essentially just lining up the four holes on so that the bracket can, can stay on. So inside the kit, you'll have some screws. If you, if you want to use the longer screws, you can as well. Um, in the long mill, you do not have to worry about the, uh, uh, the length of the screws. However, with the all mill, um, you will have to make sure that the screws don't uh, bottom out on the front of the bracket. So. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll use reuse these screws here because they match with the length of the uh, dust shield. And we'll use the screws in the kit as well to mount the other two screws on. I should also note that this disc also comes with some washers. Oh. Up to that one. Okay. I should also note that the kit comes with some washers. If, you're, if you do have to adjust the length of the screw, just use the washers that are in the kit. In this case, you won't have to use the washers. So you can go straight ahead without, without them. So at this point, once you have everything tightened down, the bracket here should be super secure. All right, so we're gonna be assembling the bracket onto the alt mill this time. To assemble this bracket, you'll need to get your four screws and use the washers as well. If you have wires coming out from the front, at this point, you can also grab the power cable for your computer and make sure that you wire it in first because you may not be able to fit it in afterwards. After you put in all the screws and make sure everything is tight, you make sure that the bracket is on solid. And after this, we'll be putting on the monitor arm. So the first step we're going to do is remove the uh, foot from this um, part of the bracket and just unscrew the whole thing off. So now you'll have this enormous screw. And then we're gonna bring this over to the machine and then mount it directly to the bracket. So here we'll put the, the mount at the very top and then this screw will go in from the bottom and bolt into the threaded hole. There isn't any specific position you need to put it at as long as it's tight and secure. And you'll have a little bit of ability to move it back and forth if you wish. I'll just put it somewhere in the middle for now. There you go. 
now you should have this mount. And we'll also hinge this around so that we can put the uh, monitor on top. Now that you have the mount attached to the bracket, now we can put the panel computer onto the mount. So on top of here, you'll, you'll find a screw. Essentially what you wanna do is take the nut off the top of it. You may need a wrench to do this if it's on too tight, but you should be able to have this as a little stud so that when we mount the computer, it has something to line up. Make sure you don't lose the nut because after we mount uh, the computer, we'll use this to lock it in place. All right, so here we'll mount the computer to the, back, to the mount like this. The hole should line up perfectly and you'll be able to use this nut to keep everything in place. Right now, this is a little too heavy because there's not enough tension. So if you need to adjust this, use your big Allen key and tighten this down until your computer stops drooping. There you go. And at this stage, if you want to position it in a sp specific spot, just loosen either the bolts here, here, or here, or here, so that you can tilt it in the direction that you want to. So in this case, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit so that it's sort of at chest level. And there you go. Perfect. There you go. So now you have the computer. From here, we're going to mount our two antennas. Just screw them onto the top here. And you will also get a power cable. So um, do this. And the power cable will go under to the bottom side right there. And just hook through just like so. And there you have it. And if you want, you can also pass it through this hole here. And any other cables can pass through in the same way. If you're using an SLB, you'll be able to use the Ethernet cable or the USB port to control your machine. In our case, we'll just show how to plug in the USB cable, but it will be the same process if you're using an Ethernet, just plug into a different port. So we'll also plug in the USB cable here, plug it in, and then just wire everything the same way we did for the uh, power cable as well with the provided wire clips and plug it into the controller. There you go. All right, so before we can power on the computer, you'll have to plug it in. So find an outlet and plug that in. I should also mention, so on the nut on the back, we, you also should find an out, uh, you should also find a little wrench in the kit and make sure you tighten it down so that everything is secure. Okay, so turn the computer on, switch on the power, and then press the power button on the bottom. Then your computer should start booting up. All right, so when you first turn on the G control panel computer, it will automatically log itself in and should bring you to this screen. I'm gonna go over a couple of things that you'll see on the computer. Just so that you know, this is the version that we have currently. You may get a newer version that might be slightly different. So if you see differences, make sure to check out the resources pages for the computer itself. Uh, but yeah, we'll just get right into it. One thing that you may want to do before you start playing around with your computer is uh, set up your Wi-Fi network. You'll be able to find your network on this menu here and put in your password and be connected to the web network. And by doing this, you'll be able to update the computer, download any software and um, be able to transfer files to the computer itself. So first thing you should know when you start up, there'll be a couple programs pre-installed, including gsender. So we'll start that up. There you go. Oh yeah, so here's gsender. And straight away, you should be able to set up your correct firmware, find the machine, make sure you have your machine turned on before um, your machine will have to be turned on so for it to show up on as a recognized device and you should be able to start jogging your machine through the computer. I should note that the pre-installed version of G-Sender will be the latest one 
that we install at the time of flashing the computer. However, we always recommend users use the latest version of Gshender. So we've also included a, we've included a shortcut which should allow you to find the latest information for downloading Gsender. And you can go ahead and download the latest version if you need to update. We'll also look at some settings. And you'll be able to um, do something, do stuff like changing the computer, sorry, changing the colors that you have. Um, one thing I'm going to do is change the uh, size of the display to 150, and that'll make things a little bit more touchscreen friendly. I'm going to see if it uh, increases the size of G-Sender 2. It just makes a little bit... Yeah. If you ever need to find more information about how to do things for this computer, it's exactly the same as any other Windows computer. So you should be able to find resources on Microsoft, but we'll also be providing tutorials and more information and guides to use this computer for certain features that we believe customers will be interested in using. By default, I should also mention that the, there is no password with the computer. If you'd like to set up a password for the computer, you can do that by with your sign-in options, where you can add a PIN code or a security code or a password. Also, there is no um, password set up for you for people to drop files as long as they're on your network. If you want to change that as well, um, you can also find the settings in the advanced sharing advanced sharing options as well. So you can turn some of these settings off if you don't want this to be available for people to access if they're on your Wi-Fi network. This is a super feature-filled computer. You can do lots of stuff with it. Um, otherwise, we hope that you enjoy using the G-Control panel computer. And until next time, thanks for watching.